Hey, everybody, and welcome to the fifth Sunday in November. We have two more days left, and the month of November is over. Wow. Can you believe that? I mean, think about it. We have zoomed through the month of November. We're about to step into December, and then before you know it, 2020 will be over. I know, you know, with COVID-19, and uh, maybe you're still at home, I, I believe most of you guys that are watching this video are taking classes from home still virtually. Uh, if you did get a chance to go back hybrid, you know, some days in school and some days at home, um, you know, maybe it'll stay that way, maybe it won't, and it'll just be completely virtual. But whatever it is, remember this month of November, we've been really trying to focus on being thankful. And so you may think and say, wow, you know, this month of November, it hasn't been exciting. Uh, guess what? Thanksgiving just passed. And I didn't get a chance maybe to go over to my family's house because of COVID-19. But remember, think, is there something that you can be thankful for? Remember, we've been talking about that during this month of November. So I'm hoping that you've, you've watched the videos that I shared with you earlier in the month and, and then also the videos that Mrs. Kelly Shelton has shared with you during this month as well. Remember, if you missed any of the videos, you can always go back and to YouTube and go back and find those other videos. If you're able to as well, with your parents' permission, go ahead and put a comment um, into the different videos so we'll know that you're learning something, that you're getting something from these different videos that we're sharing with you. And so let me go ahead and pull up something that we've been sharing this, uh, a few of the different lessons that I've shared with you during this month. And remember we talked about shout out. Remember we talked about giving somebody a shout out letting them know that you're thankful, whether it's to people or even if it is to God, letting either God know or letting people know that you are thankful. Remember, we also talked about gratitude, having an attitude of gratitude. Let others know you see how they've helped you. We don't want to just do this during the month of November. We want to do this all the time. But the month of November during especially Thanksgiving. We talked about Veterans Day, even thanking our veterans. It's just a reminder to be thankful. Um, there may be different things going on, you know, that you don't like that's taking place. But can you adjust the way you're thinking or the way that you're behaving, behaving by thinking about something that you can be grateful for? And just even right now, just take a moment. Maybe uh, Thanksgiving, you really had one of the best meals that you've had in a long time, or a great dessert, um, or maybe it was a dessert that you wanted and, and you didn't get it. But can you be thankful for what it is you did have during that time? And so take a moment and just think about what you can be thankful for. Did you think about something? Maybe it's family, maybe it's friends, maybe it's, you know, your ability to be able to uh, get on Zoom or uh, you know, maybe you, you have a phone or your parents have a phone, you're FaceTiming with people. So even though maybe you didn't get a chance to travel, you still have something to be thankful for. We also talked about during this month, say thank you. So you remember Jesus healed the 12 lepers and remember only one of them came back. And so Jesus asked the one that came back, wasn't there 12 of y'all, you know, but there was one that just wanted to come back and say, Thank you. And so just, just, you know, if we can just remember to say thank you to God, remember to say thank you to other people, say, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you in my life as well. And then we talked about adjust your attitude. So I was just talking about this, you know, maybe you have an attitude and it's kind of, you know, like, oh, you know, this is boring. I'm bored. This is going on and everything. But again, being grateful or being thankful can help you adjust your attitude. And that's very important. Remember, a attitude of gratitude, right? So attitude of being thankful. So guys, this month or for this Sunday here, we want to talk about what we call the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. In your church, you may be familiar with this term as communion or holy communion. You know, there are some churches that do communion once a month, like our church at Calvary Baptist Church. We do uh, communion on first Sundays, but there's actually some churches that do communion every Sunday. 
one of the things that we're going to look at as we look at the scripture there is that the, the scripture tells us as often as you do this. And so that lets you know that you can take communion anytime you want. You do not have to wait until we come to church to do it. You don't have to just do it once a month. It says as often as you do it. It didn't say when you do it this time or that time. Just as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of Jesus. The key with communion, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. The important thing with communion is remembering the reason why you're taking it. And so in a moment, I'm going to show the different uh, communion uh, elements that we actually have. I'm going to see if I can pull them up on the screen. So if you've never taken communion, you can actually um, see what that looks like as well. But I do have a little video that I want to show you as well. So in a moment, I'm going to show you a little video that's, that's hopefully going to um, help explain what communion is and why it's important that we take it. The video that we're going to look, uh, look at is from a church that I love, videos that come from, it's called Saddleback Church. And this video is going to uh, show us when Jesus had the Last Supper with his disciples. And so if, you rem if you've never read this before in the Bible, this is the time when Jesus gathers his disciples. He, he gathers around the table with them. And they have what was called the Last Supper. And the reason why it's called in, in some places the Last Supper is because it was the last time that Jesus was going to sit down with his disciples to have a meal. This Last Supper is, it was a reminder of what happened to the Israelites back in the Old Testament. So let me just kind of talk about this for a moment before we watch the video. So if you remember in the book of Exodus, and this is one of the scriptures that's on the screen, but in the book of Exodus, it showed that the Israelites were in bondage. They were in slavery in Egypt. Do you remember that? And so they were in slavery in Egypt. God speaks to Moses and says, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. So remember, Pharaoh is like the king, the ruler of Egypt. And I want you to tell Pharaoh that God said, let my people go. And so Moses goes with his brother Aaron. And they go to Pharaoh and they say, God, the God of the, uh, the Israelites says, let my people go. So what do you think Pharaoh did? Did he let them go? He didn't. And God actually told Moses and Aaron that Pharaoh is not going to, he's not going to obey. He's not going to do it right away. He's going to have a hard heart. In other words, he's going to be stubborn. Do you know anybody that's stubborn? They just refuse to do what it is that they're supposed to do. And so he says that they're going to be stubborn. And so Moses went several times to Pharaoh. And if you remember this here, and if you look at the book of Exodus and read through that, or if you get a chance to, to watch maybe a movie that deals with it, you'll notice that there were several plagues that came upon the Egyptians because Pharaoh would not let the people of God go. There was uh, pestilence that took place, which caused the uh, vegetables and the, the farmland that they had to the crops they had to pretty much waste away or die. Uh, there was animals that were dying. Sometimes they had different things going on with their bodies, what we call boils on their bodies. There was just a lot of different what we call plagues or different things that really came through to destroy many different things all because Pharaoh would not let God's people go. But there got to this one last plague that came. And this last one was that every firstborn male, every firstborn son would die. And this was going to happen because at one night, what was called the death angel was going to come through Egypt. And, and again, it was going to go to every house and the firstborn son was going to die. And this was the final plague. And God said, this plague will cause a huge cry to go out within the land. And so before this took place, God gave specific instructions to Moses. And he said, Moses, I want you to tell all of the households of Israel, because they lived in a place called Goshen, which was pretty much part of Egypt. So they were right in the same area. And he said, I need for you to go. And every household needs to go get a lamb. All right. 
an animal called a lamb. And this lamb needs to be a young lamb and it needs to be what was called without blemish. In other words, it, didn't, it shouldn't have any defects. It shouldn't have anything that's wrong with it. And this is the reason why Jesus is called the lamb of God. So they go every household. They had, they had to get their own lamb. Remember, they were farmers. So, um, you know, they would have this anyhow. And so they would go get a lamb that was pretty much almost perfect. And of course, they would go and they would take the lamb and the lamb was for a meal that they would prepare. It was for a supper. But one of the things that they would do is so after they kill the lamb, they would take the blood of that lamb and they would put blood over the doorposts of their home. And so that means on like the left side, the top and the right side. So they would put the blood of this perfect lamb pretty much over the doorposts of the home. And so, and then they would take the, the lamb that then they would cook it and everything, and then they would have a meal together. Okay. So this is what was called the, the supper or a meal. So you can kind of see where this is coming from. And so what happened is if the blood was over the doorpost, when the deaf angel came through that place, that area of Egypt, and as, as well as where the Israelites were living at, the deaf angel would pass over. So the deaf angel would literally pass over that house if the blood was over the doorpost. If the blood was not over the doorpost, then if there was a firstborn son in there, that firstborn son would die. And so that night went through. There was a lot of, of the Egyptian, pretty much the Egyptian houses, including the son of Pharaoh, um, who died that night. And that was the moment when Pharaoh finally said, that the Israelites, they could leave Egypt and they could go on their way. Now, we know a lot more other things happen after that, but the important thing that I just wanted to talk about in this one was this, this moment when the death angel passed over. And so the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper is also known as the Passover. And you can see the reason why, because it was that night when they were, the night before they were about to leave Egypt, Pharaoh was going to say, y'all can leave that night because of the blood that was over the doorpost, the deaf angel passed over. So that meal now was called Passover, or another phrase was called uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because even when they had the bread, the bread was unleavened, and that was part of their meal. So it was the lamb along with the bread, but it was the blood that was over the doorpost, which caused the deaf angel to pass over. Now, that was way back in the book of Exodus. So what happened is God told the Israelites, you know, every year you need to remember when the deaf angel passed over your house and you were let free and, and free to leave Egypt. And so every year the Israelites would celebrate this meal called the Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so now we fast forward and we go to the time of Jesus. So the time came, it was a time of the year, imagine almost like Thanksgiving, it was a time of the year for everyone to gather together and to have this meal, the feast of this big feast, this big celebration to take place. And so Jesus, and we're going to see it in this story in a moment, he is getting him and his, Israel, his uh, disciples ready to celebrate this feast. But the reason for the feast goes all the way back to when they were in Egypt, and the deaf angel passed over because of the blood of the lamb that was on the doorpost. And so let's go ahead and um, watch this quick little video. And uh, it'll talk a little bit more about what I'm sharing with you. And then we'll come back and we'll take a look at some scripture here. This is Jesus. Hey, -o! who is the son of God and the savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. 
so Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. All right, awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed that little video there. So again, that was talking about the Lord's Supper. So let me go ahead and bring this uh, PowerPoint back up so we can con continue to take a look at this here. All right, so let's look at the scripture here and tie in to the video we just talked about, also in what we talked about in the Old Testament. And so again, as I always say, um, as we're looking at the scripture, if you want to go ahead and grab your Bible, if you don't have your Bible um, with you, even though we're going to show the scripture on your screen, um, I think it's very cool to always um, still have your Bible to kind of look through it and get familiar with it as well. So if you need to pause the video at this time so you can grab your Bible, go ahead and do so. And then we are going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 20 through, uh, 23 through 26. So if you need to pause the video so you can go ahead and get, grab your Bible, go ahead and then we'll get started. All right, so I hope you have your Bible. So I'm going ahead and turn to the scripture again. It's going to be on your screen, but if you want to get into the practice of uh, knowing where these different scriptures are in your Bible, I think it's a really cool thing to be able to do so. So again, we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So in the New Testament, chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. So if you're, um, as I always say, if you need to use your table of contents, definitely go ahead and do that. Um, but you have the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then 1 Corinthians is towards the beginning of that area, right after Romans um, in your Bible. You got it? Let's go. Let's go ahead and take a look at this scripture. So 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, verse 23. So this is Paul. So Jesus has already had the uh, Last Supper with the disciples. He's been crucified, buried, rose from the dead. Now Jesus is, you know, back at heaven, back in heaven. And now this is Paul, um, an apostle Paul, who is now writing about the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. And now he is pretty much teaching us as now disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, believers in Jesus Christ, 
um, why we should have communion or the uh, Lord's Supper or Last Supper as well. It says, for I have received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so what I have is, um, you know, our little communion cup that we use at our church. So, and, you know, if you have given your life unto Jesus Christ, then when you come to church at, uh, at our church on first, first Sunday, we take communion together. And of course, within this communion cup here, um, at the top, you have the little wafer, which represents the bread or represents the body of Jesus Christ. And then within the cup, of course, you have the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And so this scripture here, so the reason why we do this, and I'm just going to go back for a moment. Here's the reason why we do communion. Number one, because it's something that Jesus said that we should do. And so we're following with it. And so verse 24, I'm just going to go. So again, walking through this, Jesus says, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So remember, Jesus died on a cross. It says that his body was, it was bruised and his body was, was, was pretty much broken for us. Okay. So when Jesus got, was crucified on a cross, his body was broken. It was bruised for us. He was crucified for us. He took a, a painful death for us so that we can be in a right relationship with God. And so when we're taking communion, what we're doing is saying, when we take the bread, we're saying, Jesus, I remember what you did for me. And it's the same thing when we take the juice. He says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So when we're taking the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus, we're doing remembering what Jesus did for us. His the body talks about his blood was poured out for us because, you know, they, they pierced him in the side with a sword as he was up on the cross. And many different things happened to Jesus during that crucifixion. But his blood was poured out. And so Jesus is saying, my body was broken, my blood was poured out for you. In other words, I died so that you can be in a relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. And so we take communion to remember what Jesus did for us, okay? And then the final verse here, it says, when we do this, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so what does that mean, until he comes? That one day Jesus is going to come back to the earth, and when he comes back again, He's going to take all of us that believe in Jesus Christ back with him, back to heaven. And so Jesus also said, I will not uh, have the communion with you, un with you. Remember, he was with his disciples. So he's tell telling us, I won't have communion with you until I come back again. But this is something that we need to remember, continue to do in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. And so again, we, you take communion as a sign of, I believe in Jesus Christ. And when you're doing that, you're now saying, I believe in Jesus Christ, and I remember what it is that he did. And in so many words, Jesus died for me, that I may be in a right relationship with God. And so Jesus dies for us. We accept Jesus into our life as our personal Lord and Savior. And that brings us back into a relationship with God. Now that we're back into a relationship with God, we take communion to say, wow, I remember Jesus, what you did for me. I remember all of your promises and everything, um, and that even your Holy Spirit is still with me here on earth as well. And so as I mentioned earlier, some churches do communion every Sunday. Some do it on different Sundays. Our church, we do it on first Sunday, but you can take communion whenever you want to. And so maybe you don't have uh, this cup with the juice and the wafer in it that we hand out at church. Uh, maybe you have bread and some juice at home. You can do that. You pray over that and you say, God, 
I thank you that this bread and this juice represents your body and your blood. You died for me that I may be in a relationship with God. So you can do that with your family. Remember also, whenever communion Sunday is coming, uh, there's a time when our deacons are handing out communion to you since we were not having church service in person. You can stop by the church whenever those times are that we announced or on our announcements to pick up your communion. And so if you're watching this video today, the fifth Sunday of November, next Sunday, our first Sunday in December will be communion. So again, if you believe in Jesus Christ, it'll be really good for you to participate in communion with us on that Sunday. We'll do it as part of our videos that we have here with you now. All right, guys. So again, get in the habit of being th uh, grateful, being th grateful that Jesus gave his life for us. Uh, and now we have the right to be called the children of God because of what Jesus did for us. Um, finally, guys, I don't know if you took advantage of the gratitude family challenge. Again, uh, remember we showed these on the screen of just doing something uh, to show that you're thankful for. I want to go to the second page of this one here. I don't know if I read through all of them before, but I'm looking at the one at the bottom. It says someone who helped you when you needed something. You know, is there someone this week that you can think of that helped you when you needed something that you can say thank you to? I challenge you this week to be able to do so. And then finally, we want to take a look at our uh, memory verse. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for he is good, if you know that song. All right, guys. So again, shout out to you for doing a great job. Uh, I know you're doing great with your schoolwork. Continue to do very good. Take care of yourselves as well. So. I want to thank you for doing such a great job. Remember to give thanks to God for doing such a great job. And then remember, find somebody else that has helped you uh, when you needed something as well. Let us pray. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. And hopefully we'll see you via YouTube next Sunday. God, thank you for this lesson teaching us about the Lord's Supper, which is Passover, which is celebrated by the Israelites, the Feast of Unleavened Bread which is the, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, God, and we call it Holy Communion. Thank you for teaching us about these things today. And we pray that we will continue to just show our thanks to you and show our thanks to other for what, others for what they've done for us. Father, we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, be safe. We certainly miss you, but we look forward to hopefully seeing you next week on YouTube.